Your mask to see who our guest is. It's Stan Tan! Hey! Stan! What are you doing here? Well, I don't know. I only came out to, to introduce the one and only Cher. Oh, is that why you <laughs> You just knew it. Well, was it but then I was sure it wasn't. When you know, and, and they... when he said, "Man, <laughs> not You're a don't, don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I dressed this way because I thought you would be in your usual outfit, and then you go and do that. Well, hi. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. You look, it's growing out too. It is growing. I cut it once, but I have to carry a brush in my pocket because it's very hard to manage. I like it that way. Thank you. I've been hearing such wonderful things about you. Uh, through the grapevine, uh, what your, your Vegas appearance, your Universal appearance, and yeah, you were you broke. We've it had up. a yeah, we've had really a, a good time, good reception. Everybody has liked the show a lot. And you and is they've explained the act to me. I'm not going to tell people what happens in the act, but it, it, was that was that your idea to bring on people? The, those two you, people, yes. Oh God, that's wonderful. Yeah, so I'm really excited about you that. Must really tear the place down. Now, in the recent People magazine article, which I read moments ago. Yes. You said that Kate helped you become more independent. I think, at, your... yeah, I think that really is true because at a time when I had really just kind of, I was really not so happy. I'd just broken up with Gregory and I, it was really for it. It was the last time, you know. And uh, last I met. Last time for what? It was, I mean, I haven't been with him since, so it was really oh. the, you know. <laughs> well, actually, I have been with him since. <laughs> but it was only for a couple of days, you know. It was like a picnic or something. Uh. But I haven't actually lived with him. It was just, you know. Yeah. Anyway, so, but that was, I, I just decided enough was enough, and, uh, and so, you know, that was it. And Did Katie help you decide that? No, because I didn't know Katie when I decided that. I met Katie afterwards. We were doing a telethon together, together that night, yeah. And neither one of us had anything to do after the telethon. You know, it was all dressed up and no place to go. <laughs> so we, we decided to go to dinner, and we just had a really good time. Then I found out that she played racquetball, and we just started hanging out together. And, and together we could go places that I just wouldn't go alone, you know, just go out. Is it true was... you guys wander up and down the Sunset Strip? Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> oh, holy Kelly, we're going to be reading about you. Yes. Do, you do you really? One night we did. Just, well, maybe more than one night, but one night that I could remember. <laughs> one night that I remember we were, we were on our way to a party, and uh, we decided that we would walk up the strip. And I remember I had like a black... You oh, were. I was looking really strange. Yeah. Leopard? And Kate what was did you looking, have on? I was wearing... Uh, was it the leopard? No, I was wearing black leather over-the-knee boots and spandex pants and a big leather... Oh, my, it was when I got I, my magenta leather jacket. I was so <laughs> proud of it. And I was wearing that, and uh, my hair was all really bizarre then, and, and it was just, we were walking, and people were getting out of the car and following us and talking to us, and, and they kept, well, I mean, people would go, D did you, was that, are you guys, is that, are you Kate Jackson and Cher? And I went, yeah, we are. And they were following you everywhere? Yeah, guys were coming out of there, we had like, by the time, we, and then we decided to walk up to, not the whiskey, the, the Roxy. Roxy. <laughs> Whose idea oh, was it? Anyway, God. by the time we got up there, we had millions of people following us. I think I, think I might have been on the Sunset Strip that night because it became a parking lot. <laughs> yes. The last time I was on, a, on the Sunset Strip, it was a parking lot. You got anything to add to that about helping her with that independent feeling? What no, did you, what well, did you tell I, her? the same thing was happening to me. It was just we were just um, so you're finding alone. a new friendship and finding that we could do things together that we couldn't do uh, alone. alone. Yeah. Just fun because be together to be we could really and... go out and not worry about if we didn't have dates or if we were just, you know, if this we wanted to go out. This was before me, folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't walk down the strip anymore. No walking right? down the strip. Oh, gosh, golly. How about her recent marriage? Has that given you any ideas? It's a no. year and a half old. I don't need any ideas. I don't, need, you know, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I've already done that. <laughs> you, you sitting here telling me that you'll never get married again. No, I, how could you? 
You know me. Of course I do. <laughs> I the one thing that's so groovy about this lady is her honesty. You are, if you want, want to really know the answer to something and you're afraid to ask anyone else, ask Cher, she'll tell you. Even if I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but you are brutally honest. That's got to get you in trouble from time always, to time. Always, always. It when, always when, does. When was the last time I got you in trouble? I'll tell you, the first time it got me in trouble, it was in 1966, and Peter Bogdanovich was still a writer. Yeah. Oh. And he did the first cover of Saturday Evening Post that was rock and roll people. It was Sonny and I. And he was staying with us, like, for three days, just, you know, getting a, a profile. And I had had a fight with my mother, and I said to my sister, you know, sometimes mother makes me so mad, I just like to punch her. And so he writes down, Cher wants to punch her mother. <laughs> Sonny said, Cher, you're never going to do another interview, and I'm never going to let you speak. I never spoke again to the Sonny and Cher show. You, listen, incidentally, speaking of that, you were very candid on a TV interview I saw not long ago about Sonny. Yes. Holy Toledo, you said some things I couldn't believe. Really? Oh, sure. Well, I don't think I, I mean... You said, in a sense, that you never did anything without... Him consulting you, he would tell you everything, literally. Yes. When to go to the bathroom. And Not that, you... but almost down to that one. That's the one he missed. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, he's got to hear about that and know about it. Well, it bec well, How's he going to react, or has he called you about that? No, he hasn't, but I, I, I know that Sonny doesn't really... It's like if he heard that, he would say, oh, that's Cher. I mean, really? You know, just, just... It's like when, when we decided to do the Sonny and Cher show again after I had done the Cher show. Mm -hmm. And I was the only one that knew I was pregnant. And I was just, I couldn't figure out the right time to tell anyone that I was going to go back with a former husband, having been married to someone that I was pregnant by, that I was getting a divorce by. <laughs> Wait a minute. We got a whole new soap opera out of that sentence. Do you realize that? A whole new soap out of that sentence. I know. And I, I'm sure that it's the only time that that's ever happened on TV. Anyway. But in, but in real life. In real life. And I remember... I thought, I've got to tell someone soon because someone's going to guess soon. So, oh, well, it's, yes. you get lumpy, too, after so, yeah. a while. <laughs> Especially me. So, Do you get very large? I didn't, when you, yes. Well, yeah. Some women, you can hardly notice it when they're... You don't notice on me for a notice. little bit. The stomach is not the thing that gets the biggest. I have such chest. <laughs> Dolly Parton, Dolly Parton yes, weep. eat your heart out. <laughs> and, and that's what happens first, which is nice for the first couple of months because it's really wonderful because I never have such chest normally, you know? <laughs> but anyway, so I knew I was pregnant. We had made the deal with CBS and no one knew. And I called Sonny and I said, Sonny, you've got to come over here. I have to tell you something. He said, all right. He thought we were going to talk about format or something like that. And he came over and he was sitting in my bedroom and, on the couch and I was sitting on the bed and I said, son, I have to tell you something. He said, well, what is it, Sean? I said, son, I'm pregnant. And he went, jeez, jeez, Cher, oh, God. A, a real Italian, a real Italian reaction. He put his ah. hands in his hand, and, it was, and it's his face. I can see his little face going, jeez, Cher. <laughs> and so that was, that was the first reaction. So he's used to me doing kind of strange things. You know, but it's, it's very thin people, thin ladies, who show the most seems like when they're expecting. Now, Florence Henderson can be eight months along, you don't even know. But she's kind of a little girl to begin with. Yeah, but she, so it doesn't show at all. And then all of a sudden, she, I'm going to have a baby next month. And you go, <laughs> you are? Well, I worked until I was eight months pregnant on the last Sunday and Cher show. I was dancing and everything. Yeah. I love your character, uh, that, that gal to choose the gun. What's Laverne. It? Oh, that's, Laverne in, I hope that's in your Yes, act. that's in the show. She opens her. the show. Does that bother you vocally when you do that voice? I read something about... You get all hung up. Yeah, it's it real, it because tough. it's a real high, very scratchy voice, and you're not really using your regular speaking voice. You're using this, I don't even know what it is. I don't, all I remember was that I put in this gum, and out came this voice. You did, know, you, it was a, did you ever know anybody like that? Like you that know character? what? I, I used to, there's a place in Los Angeles called Dupar's, and the ladies, the waitresses there wear their um, napkins, or what do they call Handkerchiefs, and all, I mean, boats and houses, and they... <laughs> They do their handkerchiefs into really weird things. And that's how this lady that used to be a, a waitress there and had this kind of pink hair that went in nice little patterns all yeah. over her head. Laverne is kind of patterned after her. Take us to a commercial as Laverne. Just say, we'll be right back. I can't. I, without gum. You're going to have the gum? Yes. You do. I don't have any gum. Well, I can't we do have, this, Laverne. We got some. Have no gum? Come here, right there, the camera. Oh, oh God. All right. Uh, now, this is what happened. I was trying to get a character, and I, and I didn't have one. I didn't have one. And right before we shot, I said to Dennis, who was our prop man at the time, I said, Dennis, give me some gum. 
I did, and then I said, All right, you guys, we're going to be right back. Watch this stuff. It's good for you. <laughs>